this is Roland Lee the third. RJ was uh, perfectly healthy, uh, um, I guess normal child until he was 11 months old. On July 12, 1995, RJ had a fever of 104. He was diagnosed at that time with meningitis. Before he left the hospital, they did what they called an auditory brain response test, and RJ's responses weren't that good. When we left the hospital and came home, I was sure that RJ was going to be among the miraculous group, um, which regains their hearing. I was emotionally paralyzed, and I didn't want to accept it, but it was um, the only way I could cope with what had happened to RJ. I took him in and to see uh, the House Ear Institute people. It was clear that his left ear had just about no hearing. His right ear had some residual hearing left. But when uh, the diagnosis came, it was a, like a real, like not only did I hit a brick wall, but the brick wall fell on me also. Wondering, how will we get through this? How will we deal with it? Will our son be ostracized? He has enough residual hearing where with hearing aids, he could possibly hear speech. After about a couple of months of struggling with the hearing aids, he finally got used to it and objects strenuously when we want to take him off because he knows that they help him. I wanted to give our son as much of a chance for him to later on figure out what he wants to do. And we had to debate that issue and we resolved it to deal with the oral program and the John Trisha Clinic was, it's close to us. It's world renowned, so we thought that was a place to go. Put your finger on, put your finger on, put your finger on your nose. Turn around, clap, clap. We learned that um, a simple activity such as blowing bubbles is very helpful for your child because it's an opportunity to work on B's for bubbles, P's for pop, pop, pop. It really helped RJ. And also, he can sing with us, which is really wonderful. Old MacDonald had a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on this farm he had a airplane. Airplane. The progress he's made, it's just such a dream. I'm, I'm so happy, and I really don't think of him as a deaf child now. RJ will be able to do whatever he wants, and that is just a wonderful feeling to have as a parent. I was telling the camera that only two days ago we found out that she couldn't hear. And then we found out that she was profoundly deaf and that she had been born that way. After our first audiogram, um, we were uh, told that she needed hearing aids. It was a huge struggle. She just didn't want anything to do with putting those in her ears. They absolutely did nothing for her. And she wore them for, oh, for a year. We were told about the cochlear implant at the John Tracy Clinic. That's when we went down to the house ear and she was evaluated for the cochlear implant. Six weeks after surgery, we went to the care center for the mapping. Yeah, you feel that? That's your implant. It was very hard because we had so much hope on that first mapping. And to see her not too thrilled with the, the cochlear implant, it was, it was tough. Not, not too thrilled would be an understatement. <laughs> yelling and screaming at the top of her lungs and pulling the thing off of her head and Carmen and I just thinking, oh my God, I hope we did the right thing, you know. It wasn't overnight, it was a gradual thing, but, um, well, it was like one day she just woke up auditorily and started accepting the implant and started learning to use it. Oh, they come in. There's also not too many auditory verbal therapists in Los Angeles. It's just a toy. Just a toy. After Carmen started seeing Sylvia, her voice, uh, her enunciation, everything just progressed tenfold. It's time to put your implant on. The first thing we do is put her implant on um, every morning. She lets us know that she wants it on. Good morning. Good morning. It's hot. Tea careful hot. Carmen loves tea parties, especially with her teddy bear and her Barbie doll. Hello, hot. I follow. She has been grasping so much language lately. She's got cotton balls in between her toes. Cotton balls, two toes. 
it's like a miracle. I thank God and I thank the Halcyon Institute because I call her my miracle in progress. That's exactly what she is. I love you. I love you. I noticed that there was a problem early on when um, Rachel was not responding to the sound of her rattle. No response. And that was a horrible moment. So we found out that day um, that Rachel had a profound hearing, hearing loss. And then it occurred to me, I'll never be able to talk to my daughter. It will be a whole nother world, um, another way of, a mode of communicating. And we needed some kind of place to go to. So we found out and we heard about John Tracy Clinic. We met with John Tracy's uh, staff. They were extremely helpful. In fact, they, at that point, um, gave us loner hearing aids. She was about seven months old. About three years of age, she evoked one of our first words. Okay. We took her to John Tracy Clinic and put her in Echo Horizon. They had a pre-K program there at the time. And at that point, we had her fitted with the transonic, which transposes a high frequency to a low frequency. It worked well, and it moved her to the next level. Good job. But then she began to plateau off again. Well, at this point, with Rachel, we had to make a decision. She clearly was not going to make it in second grade New Orleans. The implant seemed to be uh, uh, something to go for. So the day of the surgery, she was very brave. And then uh, 25 days later, we were at house, and they started doing the mapping. It was pretty remarkable, because she could be 25 feet away, and I'd go, Rachel, and she'd turn around. Now that she's a cochlear implant user, um, and she's doing quite well at it. How much is that? Two cups. Two cups. We are really, really pushing on language expansion, building the sentences. Where does the cheetah live? So we do a lot of artwork. Africa. Af what's that? Africa. And we converse about what's going on in, uh, in the picture. Give an example. Alona Shemza is one of her really good hearing impaired and friends. They like playing cards. Do you have angelfish? Angelfish? No, goldfish. Ready? Go! The implant itself has made her seem a little bit more independent. You're showing off. You're a show off. I love you, Daddy. I love you. Matthew was born May 7, 1988. He was born with a cleft palate and a soft palate. We went to see the cleft palate team, which informed us that he might have hearing problems. At 14 months, his cleft was repaired, and then at three years, he started in with speech therapy. And each time he was tested, hearing was not an issue for him. Matthew turned five in May, and that September, he was going to begin kindergarten. The audiologist said, Matthew has a hearing loss. At that point, we, be okay, we began a very volunteer. long journey into hearing aids. From kindergarten to second grade, he continued to lose his hearing to the point that he became severe to profound in both ears. His speech started to deteriorate even more. We started looking into the cochlear implant. We underwent the evaluation at the care center and in July of 97, he had the operation. That first day after we turned him on and he hated it, I was just so afraid. What did we do? What if we made a mistake? But within a couple of days, he, he started responding and he started seeing what a difference it makes. This year, he started fourth grade and he goes, Mom, I heard everything my teacher said. That blew me away because last year, I don't think he heard much at all. I can hear birds, ducks barking, the radio in the car, the beeper, my watch beeping. He loves Nintendo. Oh shoot. Marcus! How do you slow down? Oh, you press this. Matthew has a best friend. His name is Spencer. Yeah, press this to go faster and this to slow. He's been playing piano for two years now. With the implant, he's hearing more the subtleties in the music. It's only been six months since he's been hooked up and, and using it. Hi Spencer, I was going to let the come over and play tomorrow. 
I now look at him and okay. I see a happy, self-assured, hearing child. Okay. Matthew, we're so proud of you. We love you very much. Thank you.